Harris and Donald Trump are neck and neck in the critical border state of Arizona. Harris is heading there today again. A pair of recent polls show the two candidates polling within the margin of error, but each poll shows a slightly different outcome. A new Emerson College polling Real Clear World survey reveals Trump topping Harris by three percentage points, with 50% to 47 among likely voters. A second survey led by the television station Arizona's Family and the Arizona public affairs firm High Ground found Harris in the lead, with 48% of support among likely voters in the state, compared to Trump's 46%. Courting the Latino vote has been key in Arizona, where one in four voters there identify as Latino. Democrats have traditionally counted on this voting bloc, but if we can take anything away from recent polling, it's that Harris has work to do to win over more Latinos, specifically male Latinos. According to a recent USA Today Suffolk University survey, the GOP nominee is leading among male Latino voters ages 18 to 34, with 51 percent compared to Harris's 33 percent. Now, among 35 to 49 year olds, Trump is pulling 57 percent compared to Harris's 37 percent. There is also in Arizona a critical Senate race between the GOP nominee, Carrie Lake, and Ruben Gallego. Here to break this all down is Cameron Stevenson, the founding editor and chief political correspondent at the Cooper Courier. He is based in Phoenix. Welcome to Rising. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, good to have you on. Arizona is, of course, one of the critical swing states, also a state with a kind of independent and maverick sensibility among the voters. Arizona has sent John McCain and Kirsten Sinema to the Senate. Um, what are you looking out for this election cycle? Yeah, no, Arizona is known for picking their own kind of people. Uh, you know, our, our voters here are very much interested in who the candidate is, what they stand for, and and how they're going to deliver for Arizona. Um, and so we're seeing that in two very interesting ways with uh, the Senate race and the presidential race. The, the polling is very different. Uh, Ruben Gallego has a fairly comfortable lead on Carrie Lake, the Republican candidate, uh, if you're to take the polling into account. Whereas, as you just talked about, the polling between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris is, is fairly neck and neck. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with, one, uh, Trump has a strong history here. Uh, although he lost in 2020, he has had a strong and confident base that has, has maintained through the years. Whereas Carrie Lake uh, has made some, some major missteps in her uh, campaign both as running for Senate and while she was running for governor in 2022, that has has kind of burned a lot of that goodwill that, that you would think would go her way and, and immediately cause people to vote for Trump and Lake. Whereas what we're seeing is, is there's a, a definite split there where people are kind of tired of, of what she is doing, the way that she's campaigning. Um, and they're very much warming up to Ruben Gallego, who before this was a, a somewhat you know, smaller, lesser known uh, member of the House of Representatives. I just want to jump in there, Cameron, because it is interesting, the, the disconnect that you mentioned between the presidential race and the Senate race. And I guess we're accustomed to the idea of the top of the ticket perhaps affecting the, the races lower down the ticket. But certainly there was some reporting, and I heard sort of whisperings within the Trump camp that at one point they were worried about Carrie Lake, who is very controversial, kind of dragging his chances down in Arizona, but it doesn't seem like, from what you say, that's really a, a plausible uh, scenario at this point. Uh, I I would be surprised, and only because Donald Trump as a figure is he's his own person. Uh, you know, he is very much an independent entity. You know, he came into the Republican Party and, and took it over, reshaped it in his image, uh, and anything under that, you know it. I have a hard time seeing that uh, leading to a drop in support for him. Uh, similar to North Carolina, as far as I know, you know what's going on with the gubernatorial, gubernatorial race is not affecting Donald Trump. Uh, whereas Carrie Lake, you know, when when she ran for governor, she it was a close race, but then she spent the next several years litigating that race. She's actually still in court battles trying to unseat the current governor and have her seated as governor. And that's, I mean, that's very off-putting to people for a lot of reasons. One, 
Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of respect for people who lose and, you know, take their licks and move on. Whereas she is still fighting for that seat while she's running for the United States Senate. Hmm. Immigration, border security is one of the biggest elections, uh, biggest issues, if not the biggest issue in this election nationally. Arizona is, of course, a very key border state. How are the candidates um, addressing that issue? How is their messaging resonating? And, you know, in, in, a, in an election cycle where Republicans are, have a decisive advantage, according to polling, on this issue, you know, what is Ruben Gallego doing specifically that is so successful to keep, to, to be ahead of Kerry Lake, even though this is the most important issue and polls show favorable conditions for Republicans on it? Yeah, I, I think Ruben Gallego actually has a lot going for him in that respect. Uh, one, he has been a public servant for years and years. Before he was in the House of Representatives, he was in the state legislature. Before that, he was in the military, served in Afghanistan, and, and saw horrific losses of his, you know, his battalion. And so he has been able to, he knows how the mechanisms of government, government work. And so he is able to talk on, about his record, about how he's voted in the House. Uh, you know, he voted to support this bipartisan border bill that, you know, Donald Trump opposed, Carrie Lake opposed. And when he visits and talks with people uh, and goes to the border, it feels more authentic to people, um, more than just a, 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 you know, a photo op, uh, because he has those experiences and because he, you know, he has that background to fall back on. He also has the benefit of being able to speak directly to voters who are, are concerned about immigration, both, you know, citizens and, um, you know, immigrants. He is a fluent Spanish speaker. He is able to talk to people at their doors about these issues, talk to talk to people who may be uh, afraid of immigration uh, in a way that humanizes what is actually going on at the border, uh, which is more of a humanitarian crisis than anything. I, I think a lot of the rhetoric that Carrie Lake espouses also kind of jumps the shark. Um, you know, you, you, you can say millions of people are crossing the border and coming into Arizona only so many times before you look around and there, you know, there's no evidence of that. You know, people are coming into the United States, of course, but not in the numbers that they're saying, um, you know, not in this, this sheer, almost absurd magnitude that they're trying to portray. Cameron, just on the, a separate topic, the issue of um, election um, legitimacy and false claims that can get put back and forth about elections being fraudulent and all of that. To the best of my knowledge, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Carrie Lake has never accepted her defeat in uh, the gubernatorial election in 2022. And obviously Arizona in the presidential election in 2020 was decided by a very, very narrow margin. Do we see people uh, stoking um, suspicion or doubt about the legitimacy of the forthcoming election? Is that a concern? What's your read on that? Yeah, so uh, there's, unfortunately, there is a segment of the population of voters who are suspicious and skeptical, skeptical of our election systems because so many lies and and. Uh, mistruths have been disseminated by people like Carrie Lake and, uh, you know, especially Donald Trump uh, with the big lie um, in his 2020 election. So there is a segment of people who will believe that no matter what. But I think a larger portion of voters see our election systems as safe and secure. Um, they see this you know, really interesting thing in Arizona where the people who run our elections, <laughs> several times they have lost their election, which doesn't make sense if you're trying to rig an election. The first one you're probably going to look out for is your own. And so people see things like that. They see the process playing out as it should. Um, and then they see these court battles where, you know, if, if there is illegitimacy in elections, that's where it gets hashed out. That's where we can figure out if something is going on, if there's something wrong. And the courts in every instance have found that our elections are free and fair in the handful of times where there has been any fraudulent activity, and, and by handful I mean you, this would affect less than 100 votes, um, those people have been found, they've been prosecuted, and they have been held to account according to the law. So 
there's there is going to be unrest um and that's just the nature of arizona elections at this point um because there's that base of people who are so skeptical and because of the way that we conduct elections it takes time for us to you know count all of our votes and get all of those results um and in that time people are able to kind of sow that confusion Mm -hmm. um but by and large people are pretty confident cameron thanks so much for joining us yeah thanks for having me